It's your girl, Lady J. Back with the bullshit. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and keep it cute in them comments, baby. Do you hear me? Hey y'all, so it's your girl Lady J back bringing you my commentary on, you know, the updates in female rap and urban news. But before I get into my little video, I want you to hit that thumbs up, comment, share, and baby, you already here. So subscribe to the channel. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So the first thing that I want to get into is Onika Tanya and Kim Petras because they dropped their collaboration this past Friday called Alone. It's been a few days, so let me know if you got a chance to listen to it. I thought the song was cute. OK, it's clearly a pop song, which is more than fine. However, I did think the song would have gotten a bit more of a push from Kim's label since this is, you know, her single. Now, I also got to swallow a real pill with y'all. It's not my favorite Nicki Minaj collaboration. However, I know Nicki has barbs and bars of multiple genres, and I'm sure pop Nika barbs will eat this right on up. OK, as well as Kim Petras fans. However, like I say, it's not my personal collaboration, but I do think it was cute. I thought Nikki's verse was fire. I thought it was great. Per usual, she flowed well with the song. Like I said before, it's really hard for me to just dislike any verse from Nikki because, you know, she really eats up like 99.99% of everything she does, you know. Um, however, I noticed that she was sending some shots to the girlies, okay? Uh, Lotto in particular, okay, since Latte been asking for that type of time. So Nikki said, I send shots, get ready, they may sting. It's Barbie and Kim Petrus, main character syndrome, they extras. We ain't answering no questions, click on a bitch before she finish her sentence, okay? So let me know how you feel about it. So she's letting Latte know to get ready for these lethal ass shots, baby, because they're going to leave us stinging on a BBL ass. Do you hear me? OK. And of course, you know, back when uh, Lotto released that unauthorized recording of her and Nikki's conversation on the phone, Nicki Minaj did hang up on Latte when she was trying to finish what she had to say, because baby girl was making little to no sense while she was over there turning and flipping and reading from pages and mispronouncing the word misinterpret. OK catch it so you know lotto been acting like she want that smoke like she want that type of time when nikki really want to get at megan and cardi if you ask me but you know megan don't really want to drop no music right now because of label issues and she too busy trying to rebrand after this whole tory thing okay and, and then you got cardi over here scared to release any of her music plus her people in her ear probably telling her you know she got to come with it or, or get left so you know if lotto got to be the one to stand up and say something since the other girlies won't then i guess you know she the one who really want that action. Meanwhile, Nikki over here having fun and just dropping music when the fuck she good and damn well feel like it, baby. Do you hear me? Okay. Ain't no pressure. Ain't no deadlines, which is why I don't know why the hell some of y'all as fans give a rat's ass three bad about charting every single time she drops. Like it's not that deep. It's not. Nikki is clearly having fun. You know, you know, she spoke on this last year. I believe it was or 2021 about having writer's block. And here she is finally out of that era of, you know, having a writer's block and just dropping shit when she feel like it back to having fun with the music. And it just be a vibe and she kill her verse every time. She gave us, do we have a problem? Which was a smash. She gave us busting, which was a banger. She gave us blick blick. Okay, that was fire. Her verse was fire. She gave us I admit, uh, which I play in rotation daily. She gave us a number one hit, Super Freaky Girl. And this year then dropped a solo classic rap song, still stable on the charts, which is Red Wubity Sleeves, no heavy promo. And now gave us another fire collaboration with Princess Diana Remix plus the Kim and Young Boy collaborations. Like, sis is healthy, sis is in her bag, and sis is in her zone. She's having fun with her music, and that's what I'm personally here for. Because when Nikki is having fun and giving us all these features, like, you know, in her early on days, like coming up, playing no games okay she ain't playing no games she can't be played with and now these hoes asking for smoke and she finna give them exactly what they're asking for and i don't want to hear no talking about oh she's a bully oh she's 40 a lot of still want to come for nikki and every song she dropped okay so now she about to get a stinging on that ass like the queen bee of this rap sheet like nikki is and that's no shade to little kim by the way just spitting facts and i said what i said so I'm personally here for Onika coming to drag these hoes disrespectfully, okay? Because these girls is no, I'm sorry. Respectfully, they disrespectful and they're entitled as fuck, okay? So this is rap. Do what gotta be done in the booth, baby. Do you hear me? So let me know what y'all think about it below. Speaking of Onika Tanya, this ties in perfect with the next topic because it has to do with Ice Spice, okay? So Princess Diana Remix has debuted at number four this week on Billboard Top 100. So congratulations in order to the Queen of Rap and Ice Spice. This is going to be Ice Spice's, what, second top five hit? You know, because she got Boys Are Liars. That was, you know, 
I think it the peaked at number three, and it's still currently in the top ten, by the way. And then of course, you know, she got In Her Mood, which is stable on the charts right now, and now she got Princess Diana remix. So she out here killing it with three songs charting on Billboard simultaneously. So congratulations to her, and congratulations to the queen of rap, Onika, because here Onika is. 15 years in and still doing a damn thing, showing these hoes what need to be done to maintain longevity. And I am here for it. Okay. Let's not forget this was a surprise drop. Okay. We didn't know it was coming officially until like 24 hours before it even came. Okay. A lot of these girls cannot do us a, a, I mean, excuse me, a surprise drop and debut in the top 10. Hell, a lot of them can't even do a surprise drop and debut at all. So congratulations to the queen and the people's princess child. Now, speaking of Hot Spice, it has also been reported by Billboard that Ice Spice has quadrupled, okay, quadrupled, bring that back, quadrupled her sales this week alone from her EP Like, which, you know, came out back in January. Do y'all understand what that means? She quadrupled in sales in a week's time since the release of the Princess Diana remix, okay? She dropped this EP back in January, only had six songs on it, two of those being Munch and, and Bikini Bottom. She has been sitting at 187 for the longest. And now here on the Billboard Hot 200 Albums charts, by the way. And now here she is after the release of this remix. Went from 187 on the Billboard 200 to number 15, bitch. That is almost for all my, all my math people in the building. What is that? Like 105% increase? Something like that? I don't know. But she has quadrupled her sales. Okay. So congratulations to Ice Spice. Okay. Some of the rap girls can't even get their projects to touch anywhere near the top 20. So that is a big deal. Congrats to the People's Princess. That Nikki effect is something, ain't it? Okay. But we're going to get into that in a minute. Also, it was reported by Chart Data that Ice Spice's Munch has now gone gold. So congratulations to Ice Spice. And the reason I'm saying all that is to say this. I see a lot of people talking about how Nicki Minaj likes to ride the wave of these up and coming new artists. But let's not forget, Nicki Minaj is the wave that these hoes love to surf. She is she is the main wave. OK, let's not act like the Nicki effect is not real. Even Billboard has acknowledged this years ago. But people like to play slow and dumb. But let's stop playing slow. OK, because clearly we can see that the Nicki effect is a real deal. She collaborates with an artist or, you know, jumps on their song because they want her on their song. And all of a sudden, their career catapults or that song catapults or they start to get this recognition, all this recognition and support. OK, look at Megan Thee Stallion. Megan Thee Stallion was doing her thing. I'm not saying that she wasn't doing her thing and that she didn't already have a buzz. But after Nicki Minaj hopped on Hot Girl Summer, what did we see? More people starting to want to collaborate with Megan and that kind of catapulted her career. OK. So let's let's not play slow. Let's not be delusional. We also saw it with Bia and even Doja Cat. Even Doja Cat had her own fans with Say So and Say So was already hot. The reason Nikki hopping on it is the reason why it catapulted to where it already was. Because if Say So was already a number one record before Nikki hopped on it, how come it never went number one until she hopped on it? OK, so these, these girls are not waves for Nikki to ride. They are riding her way. They need her. OK, it's her impact. That is what's it giving them the sales and the fans and the charts that they want. That is why they want so badly to collaborate with her. Every time you turn around there, they're saying they want a Nicki Minaj collaboration. And then when she declines, they're the same ones getting in their feelings. OK, as Lotto. So I just want to highlight that because people act like she really needs to hop on these girls wave when she is the wave of female rap. OK, clearly been that way for 15 years. Clearly. So, you know, congratulations again, though, to Ice Spice. This is a big deal. Top 20. Um, and this is not even an album. This is an EP for her. So I can only imagine what her album does in sales. So I'm congratulating. I'm, I'm, excuse me. Congratulations to her. And I'm excited to see where she goes from here. It's kind of talking too fast, Jack. Now, real quick, speaking of Ice Spice, she is back in her bag with more brand deals. Um, I believe she has a collaboration with Kim Kardashian Skims Lines. You know, she looks good. Congratulations to Ice Spice and her bag out here winning. Um, I cannot wait to see what is up next from her this year. I really feel like she is going to be one of the girls to pop off this summer. Her, Coyla Ray, Nikki, maybe Doja if she can stop being a little bit, you know, weird. But, you know, I'm really excited to see what's going to come from Ice Spice because I've been bringing, uh, banging Princess Diana Heavy, Princess Diana Remix to be exact. Um, in her mood, acting as Moochie, Gangsta Boo, it's been in rotation with Ray Ruby the Sleeves and, and uh, Do We Have a Problem? Yes, I'm still listening to Do We Have a Problem? I'm still listening to We Go Up, okay? And I'll be listening to Koi because Koi got some bops on that album. But, you know, 
I'm going to carry Princess Diana remixing into the summer, but I'm gonna need sis to come with some new bops because I can shake my ass with my baddie friends to them bops, baby. Do you hear me? So hopefully she will drop an album this year while she is hot and popping and not, you know, waiting until uh, her momentum has died down like some of these hoes. So let me know your thoughts on it below. Anyway, switching gears really, really, really quickly. I want to talk about Doja Cat because she graced the cover of Le Fichel or whatever the fuck, um, USA Magazine. Okay, however the hell you say that. I just wanted to say, um, side note, I thought she looked phenomenal. She slayed the photo shoot with the exception of a couple of photos, particularly the one where she looked like, you know, she had giant porcupine spikes all over her. Other than that, I thought these photos were beautiful and I thought she looked great, you know. Doja Cat is just going to be weird, and I've accepted that, and that's who Doja Cat is. Cool. You know, like I said in my last video, if I could have it my way, I would just rather Doja post on social media when it's time to promote the music, do her photo shoots, drop an interview or two, and stay the fuck out the way because this is mad weird. But, you know, I mean, she she do what she want to do. I guess that's what makes her Doja Cat. But I just wanted to put on record how good I thought she looked for this photo shoot. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts on it below. So the next topic I want to get into is JT because sis took it upon herself to call someone's baby ugly after they left the comment that she did not like. And that comment was, you really taking city girls down, you know, after, you know, JT, little demon man, Uzi posted up talking about and looking like a bitch named Leslie Chow. So clearly there was nothing malicious or anything about this comment. And all the lady said was in her opinion that JT just taking the city girls through that. Okay. Being associated with this weirdo ass nigga. Well, JT did not like that to say the least. So she responded by saying this, ugly baby and dead father. That baby looked like finesse two times, which this by the way was unnecessary as fuck. Okay. Because that nigga is somewhere sucking on a bitch toe is minding his business. So she went on to say, please leave me alone. I bother no one. And this is what I want to have a conversation about because bitch, who the fuck are you to be talking about anyone's nigga when yours up here looking like 10 reasons of who did it and why? Here's my thing with JT. I like the girl. Don't get me wrong. I like JT. I like you. But this isn't cool. And I'm not going to give a bitch a pass because I like her. This ain't no different than when Cardi B was up there calling that one girl baby a monkey and wishing death and AIDS upon people mamas. So I feel like because Cardi can get away with saying some of the things that she says that these other girlies can think they can get away with the same shit when it don't work like that. JT is a black woman for one, a dark skinned black woman for two. There is something, you know, some things that JT she just can't be able to say like others, you know what I'm saying? Like a Cardi B. There are some things I feel like JT can say that she won't be able to come back from because people are going to come down harder on her simply because of colorism. So she might not want to take a play out of the Cardi B handbook for one, you know, I don't feel like that was a smart look or a good look for JT to sit up there and talk down on an innocent baby like that. And then have finesse two times and her son dragging her ass because she mentioned him unprovoked, which, you know, I can't blame and get mad at him because bitch, well, why is you talking about him? He ain't said nothing to you so yeah I don't think that was cool and hopefully JT does some self-reflection because baby those are those are turn off points for me okay you can't be the princess of not a goddamn thing being that goddamn ugly with your words that was uncalled for so yeah let me know how you feel about it below so the next topic I want to get into real quick is glory hallelujah because baby girl gonna need to give all the glory praise and worship to the most high God because baby girl is getting sued for an unclear sample that is used in both her tomorrow and tomorrow too you know which is just the remix of tomorrow like I've been telling y'all um now interestingly enough not only are Glorilla and her producer Macaroni Tony being sued but so is Glow's label CMG and the distributor which is Universal Music and a few other publishers so basically everybody and their mamas and baby daddy except Cardi B so I'm gonna read a piece of an article I came across that was talking about it so it says this Glorilla is being sued over an allegedly unclear sample that appears on her 2022 track Tomorrow and also the remix of said track Tomorrow 2, which features Cardi B. The lawsuit was filed last week by Ivory Paynes, a member of rap group Doghouse Posse. He reckons Tomorrow samples his 1994 track Street of West Bank, which was on the album Dope Gets No Heavier, and which was pushed onto the streaming services in 2017. Defendants used unauthorized samples of Streets of West Bank in their sound recordings Tomorrow and Tomorrow 2, paying lawsuits alleges the plaintiff did not authorize the defendant's reproduction distribution of uh, public performance of the sound recording it adds on or creation of an unauthorized derivative work of tomorrow and tomorrow too expanding on those allegations further the legal filing continues the infringing works tomorrow and tomorrow too misappropriate key protected elements of streets of west bank including without limitation its musical arrangements percussion tracks synthesized orchestration included but not limited to piano cello violin 
mandolin, contrabass, and drum set and tone and melody. Moreover, it reckons Tomorrow and Tomorrow 2 mimic and copy the arrangement of Streams of West Bank by the choice of the instrument uh, instrumentation accompanying the rap lyrics, the choice of when the instrument should drop out and re-enter and what instrument should drop in and re-enter. Glorilla has yet to respond to the lawsuit. She is being sued alongside her producer Macaroni Tony, her label Collective Music Group, aka CMG, and its distributor, or uh, distributor Universal Music, plus a bunch of music publishers also named as defendants. So y'all let me know what y'all think about that bullshit down below, baby. I think it's a hot ass mess. And Glorilla needs to go on over there to her cousin Cardi B and ask for some help. Cardi knows all about lawsuits. But Cardi probably say her name Bennett and she ain't in it because sis probably about tired of seeing a goddamn courthouse as many times as her ass been been all up and through that the past three, four years, baby. Do you hear me? So I don't know how music lawsuits and copyright samples really work. However, I would think everyone involved would be listed as a defendant, including Cardi B, since she's also on the sample. However, they did not report about Cardi B being sued as well, even though, like I say, she is in Tomorrow 2, which is mentioned in the lawsuit. So I guess we're just going to have to wait on more information from that. My thing is, though, I don't see how the hell you out here dropping songs without getting them cleared. Like, how are you dropping samples without getting them clear, baby? That is music one-on-one, I would think. Okay, good God, who was managing you girls? Like, I don't know too much about copyright, but that's like basics. That's like common sense, ain't it? To get authorization and permission that's, you know, from a, from a song before you use it. Okay, that, that's their shit. That's their music. That's their art. You need their permission. And I only had to listen to it about less than 10 seconds of the song to hear for shit show. That's that song. She for shit show took their song or her producer or whoever. And they was well aware of that because I didn't even need to listen to the song for that long to hear the similarities. I low key always felt like that song sounded familiar and I could not put my finger on it at all but i always felt like that was i always felt like that song sounded familiar especially as a kid i would hear my uncle play them type of beats so yeah i feel like glow you gotta move smarter baby granted she was you know not really popping like that when the song dropped however you are a music artist you know how this shit go and your producer should have known better too i feel like he set you up but i mean he's getting sued too so whatever that's what happens when, when you let you know another bitch suck the life at your career do y'all feel like larilla's falling off I don't think she's falling off like bad, but I do think she is losing her momentum and heat. And if she don't come with another one and fast, I feel like people are going to stop caring about what Glory Hallelujah got going on. So hopefully she do something on that tour she got with Lil Baby this summer. Hopefully an album will precede that for her sake. So I don't know. Y'all let me know your thoughts below. So the next topic I want to get into is Megan Thee Stallion because she did, I want to say, a little interview with Elle and listed her top 10 career moments. So take a listen to this. April 2020, Savage Remix with Beyonce drops, peaking at number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Oh, y'all know me. August 2020, Cardi B and I became the first female rap duo to top the Billboard charts in nearly 20 years with WAP. First of all, me. She's amazing. August 2020, named Revlon Global Brand Ambassador. Like, going fast. <laughs> March 2021, took home three Grammy Awards. I'm still- March 2022, my surprise Encanto performance live at the 94th Academy Awards. This was very- May 2022, my Met Gala moment. This was August 2022, dropped the anthem. I'm hurt, 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 hurt. <laughs> April 2023. My L cover. This is a big deal, hotties. Like, we are really... Now, the reason I wanted to talk about this is because, you know, I saw a conversation being had around it, and I wanted to add my two cents. Because a lot of people felt like Hot Girl Summer was a moment in Megan's career that catapulted her to another level and new heights. And I agree. Because it wasn't until after Hot Girl Summer that Megan started to get more and more attention, and it was her first song that she actually won an award for, which was, you know, the MTV Award for Best Power Anthem. That was her first MTV Award, first real award, period. And it won Viewer's Choice Award um, at the BET Awards. And it was also the first number one song Megan had on Rhythmic Radio. So to me, that is clearly a big deal. Clearly, Hot Girl Summer was a, a lot of first for Megan. And yet she she paid a dust and has paid a dust since 2020, you know, um, after begging Nikki and sending her fans to harass Nikki's con and comments and, you know, and, and harassing her lives, you know, to hop on this goddamn song just for her to turn around and act like it was not a top 10 highlight of her career is is wild to me. Like you begged, begged this woman to be on this song and harassed, harassed her to be on this goddamn song. It's crazy that you pay a dust. Anyways, it was her first co-sign and collaboration by a rap giant, a mega giant. Like that was something 
I don't feel like that's something you just leave out of your top 10 moments unless you're a fake ass bitch. Honestly. I mean, Megan got a song called Realer and clearly she ain't about what she talking. Okay. Gotta swallow a real pill. You are fucking lying if you saying Hot Girl Summer was not a big moment in Megan's career. I don't care how much you like Nikki, don't like Nikki. You are lying if you say Hot Girl Summer was not a big moment in Megan's career. Granted, she can highlight whatever the fuck she want to highlight, but we know how it looks and what it's given. And to me, it gives fake ass bitch because if she was really real and honestly reflected on her top 10 career moments I feel like she would have mentioned Hot Girl Summer even if she didn't mention Nicki Minaj you know even didn't say her name if she just said Hot Girl Summer alone that would allude to and insinuate the idea okay of that you know moment being big and that collaboration being big and that cosign being big and that's just how I feel I mean it's like she mentioned every year except 2019 so nothing happened big within your career in 2019 she jumped from 2018 straight to 2020 bitch like it's very evident you just don't want to acknowledge it which is your prerogative I mean y'all got whatever y'all got going on but it don't change the fact that hot girl summer was a big moment in your career hence why you still be so quick to perform it when you have shows because it's a highlight song a lot of your fans know that song and a lot of hell you got a lot of fans from that song if you want to keep it real so let me know your thoughts on it below now, besides all that, I don't know if Megan is trying to be in her Beyonce era or what, but Megan has now gone honey blonde on top of being natural now. So I guess they're trying to make her the rap Beyonce, but we already have a rap Beyonce and her name is Onika Tanya Mirage. And we still waiting on that R&B collaboration, that being Nikki, Rihanna and Beyonce. So I don't think of Megan when I think of rap Beyonce. OK, that's definitely Onika Tanya and you can argue with your mama's baby daddy. So let me know your thoughts on it below. So the next topic I want to get into is Cardi B. So it has been reported that Cardi is coming for Tasha K's assets in an attempt to get this $4 million dollar that Tasha K has been ordered to pay Cardi after losing that lawsuit last year. Well, no shade to Tasha K, but she ain't got no 4000 let alone $4 million to give to Cardi B. And I mean, who the hell would want to give her thousands or even millions of dollars, you know, especially to a bitch who's supposed to already got it. So, yeah, I mean, get what you're owed. But some things I just think we need to be realistic about. And Cardi... Ain't not ever gonna see them type of coins from Tasha K. I mean, if I was Tasha K, I damn sure wouldn't be planning on giving her no coins like that, especially when I got a family and kids. She just ain't gonna see it. I mean, this hospital bill, it, it still ain't got paid, okay? This hospital still ain't even seen my hospital bill from when I had my baby a year ago, baby. And do you hear me? That is not gonna see it. I mean, let me know how you feel about it. I just feel like Cardi B is doing the most to get these funds, okay? Either she really need that money because she exhausted so much from all these court dates and legal fees or she just really want to see Tasha K suffer one of the fuck another and either option is kind of sad honestly I mean option a you've been in the game five years you shouldn't be hurting for a damn thing if you invest right and two I don't care how much I don't like a bitch at the end of the day she's a mother and I don't want to see no mom and her kids out on the in the cardboard box I mean she got what she wanted which is to make an example out of Tasha K but I don't think Tasha K is suffering enough for Cardi Cardi is the type that want to see you suffer to me no matter how much okay she talk about living God and all of this and all of that and being a better person that's all bullshit that's all performative okay let's swallow a real pill cardi wants people to suffer that she don't like and that's you know been proven given her rhetoric over the years and her coming at tasha k this hard proves that further to me granted tasha k put her foot in her own mouth she has since apologized and cleared the air but even that is just not enough for cardi plus she still be kind of you know saying things kind of be funny at the mouth on social media so i mean i don't know let me know how you feel about it below I'm just wondering where the fuck is the music at, girl? You doing all these TikToks, tweeting and sending, um, getting motions drafted by the courts, okay, and all of this shit. Where is your music? Because you just performed nothing but three and four year old songs that were along out Thailand and you got a ginger bitch out here passing and eating you up, okay? On top of that, ain't Koi also just passed you on Spotify numbers too, baby? Hmm, I don't know. Cardi need to come on with it. So y'all let me know what y'all think about it. So the next topic I want to get into is a lotto ass child. Uh, because Latte Frappuccino has dropped a couple of songs on Friday. And, you know, I discuss all things from my rap and anything else urban culture I want to talk about. But, you know, we're going to get into it, okay? So first, Lotto dropped a new song with an artist by the name of Tia Corinne. Correct me down below if I mispronounced that, but I think it's Tia Corinne. I wasn't really too familiar with her prior till this uh, Freaky T song and I haven't really got a chance to listen to some of her catalog but I did listen to the Freaky T song the original and the one she dropped with Lotto and I'm gonna swallow a real pill when I say 
I like the vibe of the song, y'all. I do. I do. I really was fucking with the beat. It reminded me of something I would be hearing down here from in the South. You know, it, it gave me a lot of Texas vibes, a lot of Texas energy, a lot of Southern shit. And upon hearing it, I looked this girl up because, you know, I'm thinking she got to be from like Dallas or Houston or somewhere down South in Texas. Uh, but the girl is from like North Carolina. Anyway, I really like the version with her. I, I was really fucking with that song. And after listening to her original version of that song, I didn't think that Lotto should have been the one she went with to be on the remix. Even though Lotto's verse wasn't trash or anything, I don't think she should have went with Lotto to be on the remix. I'm going to be honest with you, but I'm going to get into that in a minute. But let me know if you heard the original version or if you heard the remix with Lotto. Um, let me know what you what you thought about it, okay? Um, like I said, I'm, I'm fucking with it off the beat. I really like that beat beat. It was giving me Texas vibes. It was giving me Southern vibes. Okay. I can't lie to you. And it's not that Lotto can't rap as to why I prefer the original. It's not that Lotto can't rap. I feel like she has some bars whenever she does decide to write her verse. It just don't be memorable. Like it kind of be boring low key. Like there's nothing animated or stand outish about Lotto's rapping ability to me. And then a lot of what she be rapping about don't be making the most sense. Like when she said, I'm busy dropping hits. Baby, what the fuck? What hits is you talking about? Because you said hits as in plural. Y'all heard that S at the end. Okay, so what hits? If I had to perform or if she had to perform a one hour set worth of, of hits, what the hell is she going to perform? Big energy the whole damn 60 minutes? Baby, what hits? Like these hoes just be talking at this point because it sounds good. But baby, them hits don't exist right now. Not in this realm, anyway. On top of that, this girl done swiped the whole bar out of Flo Millie's rap sheet. Like, if you are a Flo Millie fan, let me know below in the chat, um, in the comments. Um, because my day one's over here. No, I love me some Flo Millie, baby. Do you hear me? Especially the project she dropped last year, You Still Here, Ho. That's my shit. And um, on that project, there's a song called Bedtime, which is one of my favorite songs on that album, by the way. Anyway, in the opening in the opening line of the song Bedtime by Flo Millie, the first thing she says is she thinks she funny. Well, bitch, I'm hilarious. And what does Latte go up and say towards the end of her verse on Freaky T Remix? Oh, she thinks she funny. Well, bitch, I'm hilarious. Literally word for word. Like you could have at least shouted Flo Millie out at the end or something like words of flow or some shit. Let's not act like that, you know, this is Lotto's first goat stealing radio. Okay, rodeo, whatever the fuck. Because um, she done stole a couple of lines from Nicki Minaj. Let's not forget that we done already went over that a couple of videos ago. So a latte is either clearly not phased about being completely unoriginal or her ghostwriter ain't phased about being completely unoriginal. One of the two, baby. Do you hear me? So let me know what you think it is below. Also, um, they dropped the music video earlier today. Lotto and Tia Karen. OK, go figure. It's straight out the Wap Pam book. OK, they went out and, and, and put on some Wap wigs and decided to do a BAP steam video. <laughs> What Onika say? We come out, it's a movie, but we don't do baps. <laughs> okay, so I mean, if they want to, you know, get that WAP thing on, whatever, so be it. I just want to go on record, though, and say I feel like Lotto is definitely one of the rap girls Cardi low-key be shading and talking about, you know, taking her lingo and style and shit. I low-key feel like she be talking about Lotto, and I just want to put that on record. But that's a conversation for another day. We get into that later. But let me know if you like the song and the video. I honestly don't feel like the song was bad. Like I said, I never heard of Tia Corinne prior to Freaky T. But upon hearing, you know, the Freaky T remix, it took me to go listen to the original. Went to listen to the original. And like I said, I was really feeling them Texas vibes and, and the shit. Like, I, I like the Texas beat. Like, I like the Southern shit. I really wish she would have put Erica Banks on this song. This is who I really felt like would have done the remix justice if she had to go put a rap bitch on this song. I felt like it should have been Erica more than Lotto. Like I said, it's not that Lotto's verse was trash. I just felt like Erica could have wrote this beat a little bit better and killed her verse better lyrically. But I mean, Lotto's verse was cute. Like I say, her shit don't be connecting like that for me. I feel like Erica Banks could have done this remix justice, but I'm sure she went with the one who she thought was more popular, that being Lotto. So overall, I give this song and video about an 8 out of 10, only because, like I said, I love, I love that Texas type of sound or that Southern type of sound. You know what I'm saying? I could hear that like down south and I'm fucking with that. So I had to go check out the original and that's what really put me on to Miss Tia. So let me know what you thought about it below. So I said there was two th uh, songs Lotto had dropped. So she had dropped the Freaky TV remix with Tia, um, Corinne, and then she had dropped a solo song called Put It On The Floor, which we talked about. Okay, she dropped that a couple of weeks ago, performed it at Coachella last weekend. 
And um, so she had dropped it Friday, and this is a diss song. She is attempting to diss the queen of rap, Onika Tanya, and the People's Princess, I Spice. So the weak ass line people have been talking about is for Nikki, um, is when Lotto said she thought I would kiss her ass, she must have took her meds, which was weak. Okay, baby, come harder. Then as far as I Spice, she said, better keep my name about her mouth. They've been trying it. If it's beef, baby, let me know why you hiding it. And I heard about your coochie, bitch. Pits like a pussy. We all know that cat is getting fish. Which I mean, baby, where did you hear that rumor? Because I never heard it. So that line didn't really make sense to me. Um, but like I said, I guess it was supposed to be for I Spice. But she said it's getting fish. When that more so could have been applied to Koi. Because wasn't not even a month ago, a couple of weeks ago, Koi was posted up in the ocean on a boat calling herself Koi Fish. So, you know, I would have taken that more towards Koi than Ice Spice. But I mean, heck, only Lotto can tell you who these weak ass bars is for. These bars ain't hidden like that. OK, um, you just got to keep it, you know, swallow a real pill. I ain't heard shit about Ice Spice, Uchi Uchi Kuchi, smelling like a Tunchi. So what are you talking about? I feel like if you're going to diss, them hoes need to connect. They got to make sense. So, you know, I commend Lotto for putting, you know, putting it into the raps. But, baby, it's not making sense. These bars ain't hitting like a play fight, baby. You hear me, okay? We're going to get into Latte and Coyle's little beef in a minute. But Lotto dropped the video to the song about 48 hours ago. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you. The video looked like it was probably shot with 21 Savage's iPhone 13 Pro Max, okay? Clearly, she filmed this video during Coachella in between sets when she wasn't on stage. So nothing, you know, is spectacular about the video. Nothing aesthetically visuals over the top or nothing like that. The song was okay. The visuals were okay. But, you know, nothing catchy. It wasn't a bop to me. But, you know, it's not that I, I don't think Lotto can rap because I definitely think Lotto can when she feel like it, okay? Because, you know, apparently she struggled with writing hits. So she don't mind, you know, getting songs that are supposed to be hits written for her. But when it comes to actually, you know, dropping these features and dropping these, you know, rap rap songs, like put it on the flow and smoking on the X pack freestyle, those are things I really believe she'd be writing. But as far as big energy and these poppy kind of sounding like songs, hell no. She be definitely getting writers for that shit because she don't know how to make a hit song. She don't have no issue with the rap shit, but she don't know how to make a hit song or a make a pop song or a charting song and i believe that is where she be getting the help from with them ghostwriters okay um you know we heard the thing with big energy okay we and the thing with big big those poppy kind of sound of songs is where she be getting a lot of her help from so clearly you know we heard them leak reference tracks so like i say it's not that i think lotto's rapping skill sucks ass i just think she don't be connecting the bars don't be hitting okay don't shit about what she be saying and her raps be memorable i don't find myself randomly saying a lot of lyrics throughout my day so you know i give the song and video combined a six out of ten anyway speaking of koi koi wasn't too happy about lotto mentioning her name in this so-called diss song so if you missed it uh, Lotto mentioned something about pits smelling like punani and it's giving fish. Um, you know, a few lines before that, she had said, smoking on that gas blunt, big ass Koi Ray. Bitches like to run their mouths, but I'm the type to run a fade. So let me know how you feel about that line below. I'm going to be honest with you. It wasn't that deep. Because ain't no way I'm smoking on a skinny ass blunt. Which brings me back to my point, though. Lotto bars don't be making no goddamn sense. Koyla Ray is tiny. Like in real life, she's small. So why would you compare your blunts with skinny bitch? Like it would make more sense if you said smoking on that gas blunt big as Kanye or something like that. Uh, Cause you know, he's a big star for real. I don't look at Koy like that. But like I said, only Lotto can tell you what these weak ass bars mean. I mean, like, this, like I said, the shit not connecting, baby, like a play fight. Do you hear me? Okay, it's underwhelming. That's why people don't know whether to take it as a diss or a compliment because bitch, this, this is due to underdeveloped rapping skills to me. Also, like I said, even though the bar didn't really seem deep, we got to take into account for one, right after she mentioned Koi's name, she mentioned bitches needing to run that fade, literally the next line. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. Okay. On top of that, um, we did, we got to go back. We got to go back. We don't know what has transpired between these two behind the scenes. Cause if you recall back in November, they were supposed to have unfollowed each other after that blick blick fiasco. You know, Lotto had the barbs hot and all her reference tracks got leaked. One infamously being Big Energy, which come to find out was for Cardi B originally. And the other that got leaked was Blick Blick. And not only did Lotto's version get leaked, but so did Koi's. And their version was very, 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 very similar. And Koi wanted to act like she ain't know Lotto cut that record. And Lotto wanted to act like it ain't never happened, even though the song ended up going to Koi. And Koi ended up getting Nikki on it. And Lotto been trying to get Nikki on the record because she passed on Big Energy. So people feel like that could have played a hand in these two possibly falling out. 
On top of that, a couple of months ago, Koi gave an interview with Billboard, and when they asked her about the, you know, hot new rap girl, she mentioned basically everyone but Latte. She mentioned Ice Spice, Glorilla, Lola Brooke, but she didn't mention Olato. Olato might not be new, but she just got her first major hit a year ago, and it has opened up doors for her since. And I low-key feel like Koi kind of been shady the past few months. Talking about none of these bitches is seeing me and whatnot, you know, Koi. I've been seeing her tweets. Okay, she's not the most talented thing out here, but the little heifer got some bops. I'm gonna give her that. So I honestly feel like Koi's issue may have been like, you know, you really don't fuck with me like that for real. So why is you using my name in the diss track, but not use the bitch's name you really dissing? So I can kind of understand why Koi would be upset because I love he would be upset too. Bitch, you talk about put it on the floor, bitch. Well, put, put, put an address on it. Who are you talking to? Why are you name dropping me? Okay, so uh, Koi said this on Twitter. Let's fight. Lotto bye. Here you go talking about my body. Please do not come on here talking about nobody body. LOL, like seriously, out of all things, blunt my size, LMAO, this shit is never ending. These bitches want to be like niggas so bad. Pause, which bitch I don't get because rap beef ain't just for niggas. Like you knew age drag bitches is weak as hell and boring. But anyway, she went on to say this. Little Miss Pressure, anybody that talk about my body wants my body like real bad. So let me know what you think about it. Like I said, I get where Koi's coming from, okay? People do be having a lot to say about her body. And on top of that, you know, like I said, right after the line that Lotto mentioned Koi's name on, she mentioned it about running a fade. And then on top of that, this is supposed to be a diss track. Why you ain't mentioning the bitches you really got beef with in this diss? Why you bring up her? Okay, so like I said, I understood where Koi is coming from. However, I'm not also going to play crazy and act like this girl ain't trying to promote that record she got dropping this Friday called My Body. And I wouldn't be surprised if she put Lotto on it because this was definitely giving me PR. Because the gag is Lotto never responded to Koi, even though Koi done said all of this on Twitter. She let the day go silent that whole day. She said nothing to Koi. She didn't respond to not one tweet, but was so quick to respond to Nikki when, Nick, uh, when you know, when Nikki mentioned her, her song in regards to the Grammys and it being unfair and to contrast and highlight that unfairness. She was so quick to address that, but she don't want to address a bitch calling her out by name on the social media. Okay. Quick to address Nikki. But quiet to address Koi, who actually mentioned you by name and put an address on it. But Lotto dropped the whole song talking about bitches not putting an ad on shit. Whole time she not either. And then when she, you know, get a bitch to put an ad on it, she don't even want to respond publicly. Uh, publicly, Okay? What she want to do? She want to get up here and do it on stage. Respond on stage for fucking clout. Okay? So look at this. Child, a hot mess. But you know, let me know what you think about it. But Koi did respond to that little shout out and said, it was the diss record with my name on it that confused me. Much love to Lotto. Appreciate the compliment. I don't need attention. I'm all over the charts and been that girl since I came in this shit. Big trend setup for life, baby. The girl, bye. Girl, bye. Be for real. Okay, stop. This was PR. Even if y'all used each other for it, even if they didn't personally call each other up and plan this shit, even if y'all was just using each other for it, it was getting PR. Okay, we all really not fucking with each other like that. Okay, given, but y'all are both getting something out of this. Koi is getting people talking about her body and the body record that she got dropping Friday. A lot of getting people talking about this corny ass line to talk about this weak ass song for promo. And that's just how I feel. My thing is, I don't feel like Koi needs the PR and the antics. Like you got a stable top 10 record that you getting, you know, you, you, you getting pushed and, and, and you're getting these deals and collaborations. Like you say you all over the charts. Why the fuck would you result to this low level ass PR move? Like I understand why a lot of, uh, you know, needs it, but Koi, I don't know. I just feel like this was all corny to me and it was all just a fucking mess. But let me know what you think. So remember, this is my commentary, my opinion. Let me know you guys below. Don't get too in your feelings. So yeah, don't forget to um, hit that thumbs up, y'all. You've been here to the end. So subscribe to the channel and follow me on my Twitter at Southern T. That is Southern T with two A's at the end, baby. I will see y'all in my next video.